What is going on, Ben Nation? There's some wildness, there's some uncertainty, there's a lot of feelings of angst that a lot of people are having right now because the market is dipping. But let me be specific here. Bitcoin's trading at about 62.5 right now. It's a huge number. We were at 16,000 a little over a year ago. So this is a huge number. Money coming back into the market. We've had a dip. The dip obviously is orchestrated and manipulated based on the halving, which should be within three days now. So uh, then we probably got some plateau area and then, you know, everything really just starts to take off. The The Bitcoin price starts to get a real move. Then from there, you know, things start to manifest themselves a little bit differently. Solana trading at $210, you know, just a few short weeks ago, now at $131. A lot of buy opportunity happening right now. So Ben, same thing, Ben trading at 9000 just you know, three short weeks ago, now trading at 35. So um, this is just a continued and long-term correction for the market. Uh, you know, again, we were at $2.6 trillion in market cap, now down to $2.2 trillion market cap. But I'm going to tell you why. Um, and this might be the, the the opportune moment to just kind of explain to you, again, uh, what is going on and, and why all of this should matter. Now, I'm going to show you the chart. Uh, and then from there, you know, we're going to keep this kind of brief. So this is what you can see right now. Now, I did expect to see a break upwards for uh, this, you know, this next sort of big move here. What we're seeing, this is the despair area because this is, you know, what you're seeing right now is you're seeing this area. Now, we thought this was done. And over this period of time, because, of course, staking is still being uh, beta tested right now, uh, it took a little bit longer the contract that we had prepared didn't work. So you know, this created a crunch, right? A real crunch in uh, what's happening. So of course, when that happens, then you have people who are, you know, paper handed. They want to save their money. Um, and, and by the way, I do say that paper handed, but the reality is uh, they're, they're probably hedging their situation in order to buy a dip or create a dip in order to buy at a better price so the the capital probably flows back into the market and you know i'm told that there will be a time very very shortly where you know staking goes perfectly fine everything fits into place and this thing is ready for an absolute takeoff right uh, we're just not at that point and if you come over here and look at the broader market you know, I mean, what can you say? Bitcoin's down 2% right now. The U.S. market's on the clock. The U.S. market are takers. They're not makers at this point. Uh, they do everything they can to steal liquidity from this market. Uh, it's who they are. It's what they do. Um, you know, things, simple things that, that Ben have talked about. Um, you know, dog with hat down 10% on the day. Uh, Myro that I talk about all the time, down 4% on the day. Uh, Pith down 5%. You know, you come down and you start looking through a bunch of these. Ondo uh, not having a great day. You know, Polka Bridge actually having a pretty good day. That's the only one. So um, uh, SHIB looked like it was scheduled, you know, like there, it looked like there was about to be a big reversal on SHIB. And then guess what happened? Nope. Uh, it, it started to spike a little bit and then dumped immediately. So uh, the takers, the, the the takers of the market, the U.S. market uh, is on the clock and they're taking. That's just what happens right now as we get closer to that having. Now, the announcement from Hong Kong did not really come out yet. It's the uh, it's the ETF providers who are telling you that, that that's happened. So uh, the FOMO buildup and, and there's some expectation that that's not even going to be a big deal. So you know, there's a there's a weird sort of thing happening right now in this market. It's the despair portion. It's the part where you thought everything was just ready to send and the market makers, if you will, just decided, no. Uh, we're going to suppress this price. We're going to continue to wreck shorts. We're going to continue to drive price down. Uh, we're going to continue to steal liquidity from you because that's who we are. It's what we do. And, you know, you can't fix that. That's um, that's who these people are. It's what they do. So that leaves you with the question, well, what happens next? Well, um, you have two options. Hold tight. Hold tight. Just relax um, or jeet, you know, uh, sell. That's your two options. And by the way, that's not Ben. That's every crypto. Those are your two choices, hold or don't hold. And if you don't hold, and look, it's very simple here. If you can't hold, you can't win. That, that's very simple. Um, if you are transactional and you, you buy dips and you sell pumps, 
perfect. That's, that's going to be fine. But if you're a long-term hodler and now you're starting to question your long-term hodling because something's fundamentally changed in your mind, remember nothing's fundamentally changed about Ben Armstrong. Nothing's fundamentally changed about Ben Coin. Um, things take a little bit of time. And uh, I think somebody asked me a question the other day. Well, why does Ben only have 3% of uh, Ben Coin in his portfolio? Shouldn't he have like 90%? No, that's stupid. You should be hedging uh, everything that you do against something like that. You're told by everybody who's a professional. You're told by like Gareth Soloway, even if he's wrong a lot, or Raul Ra Ra Paul, uh, even if he's wrong a lot. Lark Davis, doesn't matter who you're you're talking to. You talk to Eric Bakunas, James Safer, talk to anybody who's into investment. Uh, you can even talk to Peter Schiff and he would tell you, don't put all your money in gold. That would be stupid. You only, you only put your money uh, you only put what you can afford to lose first. And then secondly, uh, diversify. Make sure that, you know, because you don't know when a specific thing's going to pump. Now, if something does pump and you get lucky, hey, you got lucky. But that's not how this works. You want to be a good investor? Make sure that you've diversified your portfolio such that you are not at risk from just one single crypto absolutely wrecking you. That's that's silly to do. So uh, why is Ben holding 3%? Because 3% should be enough. That should be enough when uh, Ben Coin does a uh, what? What is it going to take to get to um, the top 100? Uh, it, it would take probably a 250x from here. So if you have ten thousand dollars in it right now, that's 2.5 million dollars. Uh, if you have a thousand dollars in it right now, it's 250 thousand dollars. So uh, if you think that um, you know, if you, if you think that you don't have enough, I, I don't. I don't know what to tell you. So decide. Whether you're going to be a holder or not a holder, but nothing fundamentally has changed other than you, other than your need to look at your wallet that you're not supposed to be trading anyway, uh, or just kind of hodling. And you're you're looking at your hodl bag, wondering why my hodl bag go down. I, you know, I, guys, they just have to be mature and hold. And you can ask questions, of course, you can you can ask questions, but you can't tell people what to do, and um, you got to have a little patience. That's all I can say. Anyway, this is not financial advice, but I'm always right.